What is up guys, it is Tony here and today we are doing a quick little uh, tutorial on Final Cut Pro. This is going to be my Final Cut Pro uh, editing tutorial series where I'm going to be going through showing you everything uh, that I know about Final Cut Pro, the basics and some of the tricks I've learned that many editors probably don't know. I consider myself one of the best Call of Duty editors that uses Final Cut Pro. I've seen many of them and they do alright, but I definitely think I've mastered it to a point where like I should probably move on from it. Um, but to be honest, I'm going to stay with it and I'll tell you why. I think Final Cut's one of the most powerful editing programs. I am able to produce videos like if you go on my channel like Fatality and like um, the Skrillex video. And all these videos I'm producing are crazy, uh, pretty pretty sick editing. It's not you know very advanced, but it's pretty sick editing uh, for a program so basic. Um, this is actually a pro consumer grade uh, program. It's kind of right in the middle of pro and consumer. Uh, the reason why is because it's very simple at, at times, but it does do a lot of advanced things, and it could get really tricky if you uh, really want to do some cool stuff. Uh, there's a lot of keyframing, and there's um, some really cool tricks you can do with a lot of the tools they give you. So, uh, first off, we'll just look at the actual um, scheme here. Uh, when you open it up, it'll probably look like this. Up here, you have your event library, and this is where you can import files. And you can see it's pretty simple to import. You can just go in, and let's see what we got here. We'll just import some random clip. And uh, usually, when you import a clip, it'll just show up right away. And uh, actually, if you click on this thing here, this is the background tasks. It'll show you uh, the progress of importing. And uh, I recommend that you transcode your media whenever you import, or you just select that option when you're importing, because you don't want your media to have a problem while rendering. Um, then under the uh, event media library, you have some controls for what you can do with the media. You can uh, mark it as you know used or unusable, or you, you should you know don't use that later or whatever. You could favorite it and say, you know, make sure you look at this, make sure you check it out later. Uh, you can also tag them. You can actually add a tag and say, use this first, for example. As you can see, I have feeds and trick shots. I switch it up a lot. Um, and then you can also uh, start adding them into the uh, project, of course. So let's create a new project, and we'll call this tutorial. And um, when you create a project, you have options, <coughs> if you saw earlier. Um, just leave it as is usually. There's really no big problem. Uh, usually it won't ask you what frame rate you want to drag a clip in. Um, I actually have mine set to 60 frames per second on default. And uh, you'll see you can drag through here. I just dragged in the clip, of course. And you can just drag through and see what's going on. Um, you can also preview it up here. And uh, you can hit fit. I recommend you hit fit so you can just see what's going on. And if you hit I... It allows you to, ins that's called the inspector tool. It allows you to see what's going on with this clip. So you can change your scale, you can zoom in, zoom out. Uh, most people, I mean, they'll just do most of these things from these tools here, like transform, where you can zoom in and out, and you can rotate. Um, I like to do it all from here, because this is kind of more like After Effects, where you can do keyframing, and you can mess around with very specific controls. But like I said, it's more of a pro and consumer combo. Most you know, consumers will probably use these things, these tools here. I like to use the pro ones because I've been using this application for, uh, I think, almost a year now. Um, so, yeah, uh, that's the project right here. And uh, you have some tools you can go through. Uh, you can get a list of tools here to see what you have. Um, but I usually use the keys. You can see here it says, like, what letter it is. So I know that P is position, and I can drag it out a bit more and have a black screen in front. And I can replace that with another clip if I want. Uh, Command-Z, obviously, to undo. I just did that. Uh, the Blade tool, which lets you cut things. And you can just take out the middle part if you want. Um, and there's other tools that I really don't use much. Trim, uh, which I think just lets you, what, trim it? <laughs> like what? Uh, uh, I don't know. Yeah, but you can play around with those. I mean, really, the only tools I use are Position, Blade, and uh, what's this one called? Select tool, Selection tool. Uh, the hand is kind of cool too, um, probably, but I'm not doing it right. It's probably for something else that I'm not really doing right. I feel like a noob because I've never used any of these tools. The zoom one is kind of useless in my opinion too. Uh, speaking of zooming, you can see the timeline here. You can really just zoom out and you can see up here there's a, a nice indication of how far you are into the footage. Um, you can also zoom in really far, and you can just see every single frame one by one by one, uh, which is really cool, actually. 
Um, if you really want to get precise edits and you really want to sync it up to that, you know, that dubstep song build up, it's really good to get in that inside of there. And speaking of syncing, uh, when you play the clip, uh, I hope this won't make a ton of noise. Let me actually turn down my volume here a bit. Uh, yeah, when you play the clip, you can add markers. So, like, say, let's see if I can do this. There's a shot, there's a shot, there's a shot. So you can see I added markers every time there was a shot. And you can do that to sync up to audio. Like, if I drag, like, a song in here or something like that. I don't know, some, like, Kid Cudi song. Let's see. Um, might take a second. Of course, that's to load in the audio. And that's actually your audio and media library over there. You can uh, drag in music and you can add markers to the music itself and you can sync up those markers to whatever. So say there's like a few beats here, I could just, you know, add some points and then I could sort of bring it over. And you can, you know, blade tool. You see where this is going. I mean, a lot of cool stuff you can do. Obviously, I'd probably slow motion that. Probably wasn't smart to do that, but whatever. Um, anyway, so let's go to these. You got your effects. You can go through a lot of you know effects that come with it that are really cool. Uh, some that I actually bought myself. Uh, one of them's right here actually. Um, photo library. Uh, there's my graduation. Uh, it's kind of interesting. Um, at least nothing you know embarrassing popped up there. That would have been kind of aki. Uh, yeah, you got your music. We showed you that earlier. Chill music. I got like you know montage music, epic music. I got some Skrillex. I got some Serge Tankian. Serge Tankian's the shit. His new album's amazing. Um, transitions, I have a lot of transitions, um, that I actually downloaded, like these here, which are really cool, uh, cool little plug-in there. If you guys want some plugins that I have, and you want some, like, cool things, uh, in a little editing pack, uh, go ahead and subscribe. Once I hit 1,000 subscribers, I'm doing a huge editing pack, and it's gonna be awesome. All for Final Cut and After Effects, um, mostly Mac programs, because I'm a Mac editor. Text. Uh, generators, which are kind of interesting. They have like a counting generator here. You can go through these and see what they have. These are all uh, plugins, actually. These uh, split screens and stuff. And, of course, just your themes. Um, it just organizes everything by theme. Like There's a scrapbook theme that you can go through. <laughs> they have text, transitions. And, yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, other things real quick. There's a tool here that I'd like to mention. This is the retiming tool. It allows you to do slow motion. And um, I'll actually have another tutorial explaining how to do really smooth sm uh, slow motion in Final Cut. A lot of people don't know how to do that. This is kind of like a color correction tool, but I recommend not using it. I'll show you how to do color correction in the future on Final Cut. And, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, I am Tony, and I'll see you guys in the next tutorial. Subscribe if you want the editor pack at 1,000 subscribers. And if you want to see more tutorials like this, I'll be doing tutorials on Final Cut, After Effects, all Mac programs, because Mac is the way to go. Let's just let's just be honest. Come on. It's all about Mac. Anyway, that's pretty much it. I am Tony and I'll see you guys next time.